Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our fourth example of how to use the nodal analysis method by inspection to solve a circuit like this. Now it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, the matrix will be a little bit bigger. We're not going to actually solve the matrix in this case, but we're going to show you how to quickly set it up so that you can actually go ahead and continue to solve it. What we need to do first is find a reference node with the known voltage. Let's connect the circuit at the bottom here to ground. That becomes our reference voltage, zero volts. Next, we need to assign voltages to the nodes. How many nodes are there? Well, there's one node over here, which is the same as this node. That's one node. There's another node over here, and there's another node over there. There's three nodes. Let's call them V1, V2, and V3. In other words, those are the voltages each of those three nodes that we're trying to find. What that means is we need to come up with some sort of matrix where we have the elements. This will be a three by three matrix now because there's three nodes. We multiply the times the voltage matrix, V1, V2, and V3. We then set that equal to the current matrix, and that will allow us to solve for the unknown voltages V1, V2, and V3. The current matrix is very easy to find. What we do is we look at all the current sources only. We don't worry about the currents in all the other branches. There's two sources. We can see that at the first node, we have six amps entering and four amps leaving. That's a net of two amps entering that node plus six minus four, two amps of net current entering that node via current sources only. For the second node, notice we have no current sources entering or directly connected to that node, therefore we get zero current for that node. And the third node, we have four amps entering via this current source. This current source cannot reach that directly, so we have four positive four amps for that. That gives us the current matrix. Now we need the nine elements that make up the conductance elements. Finding G11, we're going to add up all the conductances connected directly to node one. Remember that the conductance is the inverse of the resistance. We're not going to write that into the matrix, uh, into the circuit right here. We should be able to cal calculate that directly. Notice we have one over four. That this connected here, we have one over three. And we have this one also directly connected to V1 right here, plus one over six. Together, uh, let's see here, the common denominator is 12. This is equal to three over 12, plus four over 12, plus two over 12. Uh, three, that's seven, that's nine over 12. And 9 over 12 simplified would be 3 divided by 4. So 3 divided by 4 is my first element, that's my G11. My G22, that's the conductance directly connected to the second node right here. There's three resistors, therefore there'll be three conductances. 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 plus one over six. It looks like the common denominator here would be 30. That would be equal to 10 divided by 30, plus six divided by 30, plus five divided by 30. And together that would be 21 divided by 30, or seven divided by 10. This is equal to 21 divided by 30, or seven divided by 10. The second element here would be 0 0.7, 7 tenths. The third element along the diagonal right here, G33, is all the conductances directly connected to the third node. We have the 6 ohm resistor, 1 over 6, the 5 ohm resistor, 1 over 5, and the 8 ohm resistor, 1 over 8. Hmm, common denominator here, uh, wow, that would be um, 8, 6, and 3, that's 4, that's 120. Common denominator is 120. 6 over 120, 20 times, 20 over 120, plus that would be 24 over 120, and that would be 15 over 120. Adding those together, that's 44, that's 59, G33 is equal to 44, 54, 59 divided by 120. If I remember right, 59 is a prime number, so we can't change that at all. 59 divided by 120 goes right here. Now we have the diagonal elements. Now we still need to find the cross diagonal elements, which means we need to find the G between one and two, which is equal to the G between two and one. Here's the two nodes. 
there's only one conductance directly connected between those two nodes. That's right here. Conductance of one third. Of course, we need to find the negative. Negative one third. That would be the G12 and the G21. Negative one third and negative one third. Now we need the conductance between 2 and 3. G between 2 and 3, which is equal to G between 3 and 2. 3 and 2, right here, there's only one resistor connecting those two nodes. The conductance would be 1 over that, 1 over 5, and we make that a negative, 1 over 5. So 2, 3 would be down here and here. That's minus 1 over 5 and minus 1 over 5. And finally, we need these elements. That's G3, 1 and 1, 3. G31, which is equal to G13. Between nodes 1 and 3 is a direct, direct connection. There's only one direct connection, which is this resistor right here. The conductance would be 1 over that, 1 sixth, minus 1 over 6, and that goes minus 1 over 6 here, and minus 1 over 6 there. Now we have the three equations in matrix format. To find V1, V2, and V3, what you have to do is as follows. I'll just go ahead and set it up and you can see it. The determinant matrix would be equal to this, which is 3 quarters, 9 over 120. So you go ahead and find the determinant, which is done by taking the two more columns, putting over here, multiplying those diagonal elements, subtracting when you multiply those diagonal, diagonal elements, and then you get a number. The next thing you do is you then want to find the matrix which you could then use to find V1, which is equal to the same matrix as we have here, but the first column replaced by the currents. So you end up with 2, 0, and 4. Then you keep the other elements, and 59 over 120. You find the second matrix by taking the, the uh, current matrix and replacing the second column. That gives you 3, 59 over 120. And finally, you get the third matrix, which is by taking the original determinant matrix, 3 over 4, 2, 0, and 4, and then you find out the value for that. Then finally, you can say that the voltage, V1, is equal to the matrix here that you evaluated divided by the determinant. V2 is equal to the matrix here divided by the determinant, and V3 is equal to the matrix here divided by the determinant. So go ahead and solve, try this at home, find the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix, find the value for this, for this and for that, and find the voltages V1, V2, and V3. What we're just trying to show you here is how quickly you can come up with these equations using this nodal analysis by inspection. It's a really fast method, very easy to come up with the equations. Of course, doing that takes a little bit more work. Go ahead and try it, and that's how we do that.